Welcome to ARW. I'm Harold and today we're going to make a couple of flywheels for our small model steam engines and one's going to be made out of lead and one's going to be made out of Zamac. Now this is kind of a Mr. Pete production because the, he had the total influence on me making the first lead flywheels because that's what he was making for the little engines he was making and he introduced to the, us to the Zamac gears in the uh, Atlas lead and Craftsman lathes so you could say he's got a great deal of influence on this and everybody knows I'm a real Mr. Pete fan and I was watching him when he was making those lead flywheels and machining them and uh, I could see that the, how the flywheel fit his hand I figured about how big his hand was, about as big as mine, and, and I measured that, and I, that's, that's the size I made the flywheels. And I pretty much made them the same way he does. I'll show you what I got here. I've got here a mold, which I made. It's got positioning pins here. This is what I cast the lead flywheels in. But since Zemax got such a long, uh, such as, you know, a uh, low uh, melting point we're going to make the Zamac uh, flywheels in this same mold now I've got a little something to do here in the hub this is where Mr. Pete would drill a hole and, and thread in a, uh, a set screw grub screw to our friends across the sea and uh, I'm going to put a little boss on here I call it a boss a little piece of metal here so that there's more to drill in and more for the threads to hold on to. Once we get through with that we'll worry about the uh, Zamac which hasn't arrived yet. I ordered it last week and it'll come sometimes this week but we'll be somewhere along the road making these lead flywheels here just shortly. Now I'll show you what I made the lead flywheels in. This is a Lee bottom flow lead casting pot. You lift up on this handle and the lead comes out of a hole in the bottom. Okay, it's got a thermometer up here and this is what I was using to cast the lead flywheels. Makes it easy. All the scum and dross and stuff floats on the top. Pure clean lead comes out the bottom. So I figure that I'll be using that again. And anybody need a, a little tube for their air conditioner on their car? All right, so, and of course this, that's a, a patch holder for patching tubes out of tires. I don't imagine everybody's got one of those, but I do. And anyway, I'm going to melt the lead here in this leaf bottom pour pot, and we'll put it in that... Uh, mold but like I said before we get to doing the mold I'm going to make a little boss there for us to have more metal to screw the set screw into. Now I made a couple changes since you guys were here last I bought that service cart down at uh, Horrible Freight and uh, covered it over with some uh, plastic trash bags and filled it up with green sand. Now I can you know prepare a mold and make castings standing up. At least I can prepare the mold for the casting standing up instead of having to get out on my knees on the floor. That is a huge improvement and all for 70 something dollars. So, and I, I don't know if I ought to leave the sand laying in there or not. We'll think on that. See how low I've got those two befores across there? I had started out and I was pounding the sand down and and the bottom was kind of bouncing up and down and so I told Chuck and Chuck being management and smart and all that he says well why don't you put two of fours across the sides of it on the, on the hard sides and see if they don't stop it well that made it just solid as a rock there you go that's Chuck thinking again alright now I don't know what you guys call what I'm going to make but I call it a boss and it's going to be there to give us something to drill into and thread into 
for the set screw that holds the, the axle on. And I'm going to do it entirely by hand with this uh, piece of tool steel here. And I think I think it'll cut right in there pretty good. I think that's going to be good enough. I'll put you to sleep and I'll take a look at it real close. Well, like I said, we're going to tap these holes. And I'm going to crank this thing up and let it just sort of push it in there. straight so that's why I'm doing it like this all right so I got straight on that hole and power tapped it anyway power tapped it straight power tapped the others and now all I got to do is find some quarter 20 screws to put in there and that'll be the breaking open stuff Okay, there's the flywheel making stuff. This piece right here, this is to bolt the flywheel onto and turn it in the lathe chuck. Got these little screws to hold it. Got a pin in the middle to hold it centered. I had made several of these. I've got a little pin here to go ahead and make the center hole. It wasn't that good an idea. Anyway, I had several of these, and uh, some guy in Belgium or somewhere wanted them, and so I sent them to him, and then I discovered I had one or two left over. After I thought I'd sent this guy all my flywheels, I discovered I still had two. This is one of those two, and the little boss I made is going to stick up right there, so you got more metal to, to screw your screw into, and that ought to be good. So this is this is what you ca cast from the lead, and we're going to cast it from uh, Zamac and see how it compares. All right, there's a four-pound bar of Zamac five, and that's what I'm going to cast a flywheel from. I'll uh, just compare the sizes of the two and cut enough off that bar that I think it'll have the same amount of uh, bulk I think if I were to cut the end off of that bar just about there that would probably fill the mold completely looks like it to me so while you take a little rest I'm going to cut the Zamac I believe there's seven grades of Zamac and each grade has uh, four percent aluminum. Every one of the seven has four percent aluminum, but they're different in the uh, amount of copper and such that they have. That one right there is Zamac Five, and it's uh, four percent aluminum, one percent copper, and the remainder is, is uh, zinc. Zamac Three, which is actually uh, more commonly used around here, is. 95% well no 4% uh, aluminum and 96% zinc so this is supposed to be a little bit stronger and I say one thing it sure cuts slow and if you look at it there it's, it's been cutting like that for five minutes 
It'll be through in a little bit, so and when it gets through, we're gonna take this setup right here. And zoom back out. I'm gonna heat up that mold called Zamac is melting, which I'm gonna run up to about 800 degrees Zamac. I'll heat that mold so it doesn't chill the metal when I pour it in there. And we will then have another fry wheel. And we'll see if we can polish it shinier and better and prettier than, uh, than the layer. I can tell you that stuff was hard to cut with the bandsaw, but here we are. There's the, the piece of metal. We're going to melt it and pour it and see what we get. I'm going to melt it right there. Whoa! Kick the, <laughs> kick the tripod. Tripods are a hazard. Alright. Control power. Alright, see? I got her down to 840 degrees. Zamac is supposed to melt about 725, 723. But... I find it's good to go about 100 degrees above because things cool off between grabbing hold of them and hauling them to the mold. So we're going to let her just kick along like that and I'll let you know when it's hot. What I'm going to do is heat up this uh, mold so it doesn't chill the metal when I pour it in there. So I'm going to make another attempt at pouring it. I think it's probably melted now. I looked at it a few minutes ago and it was melting into a puddle. I don't know why I had, had extra heat. Yeah, it's all liquid now. So, we'll try to carefully pour it in that hole. Who knows? Who can say? Maybe we've got uh, success and maybe we don't. We'll find out in just a little bit. It'll be just a second to you. Alright, <clears throat> so now then, I think it's cooled off probably enough. We'll, uh, It's still hot, <laughs> but I'm sure it's not molten, at least I hope not, so we'll There's our flywheel, so and there's our our hole for the axle. Let's see if I can knock him out of there. No, it's going the wrong direction. There we go. Got him out. That was a stupid idea of mine to put a tapered pin in there for an action. I'm not full of wonderful ideas. <laughs> Alright. Now we've got to get this one parted from the from the mold. He sort of looped over. So looks like I'll have to get a screwdriver. And I'll bring you guys back when I get through. Okay, there's our Zamac flywheel. There's the little boss that I 
made on it to put the screw in. It's probably not really as big as it should be. But anything that comes along this shiny in the beginning, you know you can polish this thing to a high luster. And I may stick it in the uh, lathe and see what I can do with it. Uh, let me clean this uh, little piece off and, and we'll see where we go from there. Guys, I'm about half freaked out because I think there's some kind of critter over in that junk pile there. I hope it maybe it's got a four, four feet and fur. But I hope it's not something slithers on its belly. That'd really freak me out. Alright, 4.6 ounces for this guy. And it's not trimmed up or machined or anything. This guy's been trimmed and machined. 6.4 ounces. So this is 50% heavier flywheel than this one. Although I bet money that's plenty heavy enough. So let me fool around with it and we'll see if it's machinable. Alright, so I went over there and I drilled a slightly off-center hole. And I can tell you this stuff is tough. If you run a thread down from the side for for a grub screw, set screw, it's not going to be suffering for threads. It'll be strong. You could even thread the inside of this thing and screw it onto the end of the wheel. <laughs> but I'm not going to machine this guy until the next video. So until then, we've got two fly wheels and we're going to let those two fly wheels Rest in peace for a week. Ole had a reputation for always catching a lot of fish. That made the game warden kind of suspicious, you know. He figured he'd, he'd go along fishing with Ole, find out just what he was up to. So the game warden, you know, he got three rods and all that and three boxes of tackle and stuff brought with him. So he'd be pretty well prepared for anything, you know. And he gets in the boat with Ole, and Ole rows out into the middle of the, of the stream there, you know. And all Ole's brought with him is a little brown paper bag, you know. Ole reaches in the bag, pulls out a piece of dynamite, lights it, throws it in the water, and you go, boom, you know. And there's water flying all over the place. And when the water starts falling, there are about a dozen fish floating on top of the water. Ole rows out there, you know, and he starts gathering them in. Game warden finally finds his voice, and he's so mad he could just spit, you know. He says, Holy, Holy, you can't do that. That's against the law. Holy, you know, he's got his fish pulled in. He looks at the game warden. He reaches in that bag, pulls out another stick of dynamite, lights it, tosses it to the game warden. He says, Well, you're going to just sit there, or you're going to fish. <laughs>